Hello, Holist. Happy Cyber Monday. Super excited to see you guys today. Um, I'm here for Medical Monday. As everybody knows, there is a Cyber Monday going on and everyone's got deals and Holist is one of them. I have a sweet deal that I'm a little bit crazy for having put out there. 60% off of the weight wellness program, a 12 week personal coaching, digital education, around food, weight, exercise, stress, and more. My personal coaches are amazing, including the mindset coaches. So please do check in and see what our deal is through midnight today. Uh, today I have um, Dr. Huma Sheikh here and I'm gonna add her on here. Hi Huma, yeah, I see you. I interview other docs about interesting things. And I'm passionate about educating patients and communities about health, about wellness and the medical system. Uh, Dr. Sheikh is a neurologist who specializes in stroke, headache, and research, here to talk to us about the myths and truths about headaches. And so as she joins us here, hi there. How are you? How are you? Welcome from New York City here. Huh? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having yeah. me. You're welcome. So I'm here in Boise, Idaho, and as always, as my listeners and watchers know, I am a nocturnist, so a night doctor in emergency medicine. I often do these early for my East Coasters, but also because I get done with shifts, and so I'm like stuck in this really boring drab background, so sorry about that. No, welcome this morning. That's perfect. I'm a morning person, so this time works. Oh, good. Perfect. <laughs> So um, I'm really excited to talk to you because I, um, I love our female physician entrepreneurs and you have made a huge leap, really exciting in New York City from academic medicine into private neurology practice specializing on headaches. Headaches are so important because so many people suffer from these. There's a lot of misinformation out there as there is a lot about health. And so I'm really excited for you to be here, our neurologist in our pocket, <laughs> Thanks. to talk to us about headaches. And so first, give us a little bit about your why, you know, where, why are you in the situation you're in right now? Why this practice? Sure, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about kind of how I got to this point. Um, so I started, uh, I did my neurology residency at Montefiore in the Bronx. So I grew up in New Jersey, kind of always stayed close. Um, and then I did a headache fellowship at, in Boston at Brigham and Women. And that was, I was across the street from you at the BI, oh, emergency medicine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should live in Fenway right there. Yep. Um, and so, you know, after um, I did my headache fellowship, I stayed in Boston for a couple of years. And, and then I decided to, you know, to be back home closer to my family. So I came back to New York City. And I think for a lot of us um, going through you know, a neurology residency at a major hospital, and then going to Brigham and Women's, which is a huge academic center. Um, I always thought I was staying academics, and I always thought, right. I would, and teaching residents is a huge part of what I loved about my job, so I always thought that was kind of like my career. Well, and also, you know, when you're surrounded by academics, it's like that's the only thing that exists, Exactly, right? yeah, and it's yeah. Also, it is a little bit looked down upon if you want to go into practice for yourself. Um, so anyway, so I came back to Mount Sinai here in New York City, and I, I was there for three years. And to be honest, the atmosphere was a, a little bit different than in Boston. In Boston, I think maybe still I was still a fellow, and I stayed there after fellowship. I felt like, you know, it was much more of a community, and the physicians, um, we all felt like we the the best way to say it is I think the administrators felt like if we teach our docs, if we treat our physicians well, they're going to treat our patients well. Um, and so coming back to New York City, I think it's a little bit of a different environment. I think I wanted yeah. to feel more like a cog in the wheel. I felt like I didn't really have a lot of control over how I treated my patients. Um, something like headaches, I felt like the best thing is to provide a really comprehensive and holistic approach where it's much yeah. more than you know, giving the medications, it's about your lifestyle, it's how, you know, you're dealing with stress and how you're sleeping. And so for me, trying to put that all into a 15 or 20 minute visit with a new, you know, with a patient, um, I just felt like I wasn't doing them a service. And so yeah, I well, you're preaching to the right person. So you know, at Holist, and that's the, the name of the company is Holist for that reason, right? It's, it is how can you curate you know, your whole being for whatever those issues are they're doing. And I was thinking when I was composing, um, you know, the post for today yeah. is how much of headache is really going to be associated with 
you know, your food and with your exercise and your stress management and your mindfulness. And those are all the things that in lifestyle medicine that we yeah. completely, you know, know the evidence of. And so really, and having the opportunity to have, you know, a 60 minute consultation instead of 15 minutes, it's really awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And just like you said, all those things, especially for someone who has chronic pain and headaches, uh, those yeah. are all the things that contribute and all the things that you have to try to work on. It's a really a multidisciplinary approach. And it's hard to do when, you know, you have patients lined up one after the other. I mean, there's a huge need. Um, so I understand, you know, some aspects of the approach. But, you know, if you just don't feel like you're actually giving 100% to each patient, um, they're left not feeling like they were really helped. And and from Absolutely. Side too, there were there are a lot of times where I feel like I really didn't give them everything I could have, you know, you give them some papers to say, okay, read this on your own. Um, but it's, it's, there's nothing like actually talking it out with someone who knows, you know, the evidence um, and has, you know, taken so many years yeah. to, to learn all of this to not be applied in a way that actually is effective. I just felt like I wasn't doing enough for my patients to be quite honest. Yeah. And you're, you're, we're going to get to your kind of three headache tips and education here in a second. But, you know, one, one of the things that you are touching on here is I think, you know, as my wholeness watchers know, um, there are a lot of physicians that are struggling professionally for a lot of the same reasons that you just said. But for me, it's really the core of it is that is the patient. Um, feeling heard and is the physician feeling like they are able to provide that education and still create that relationship with the yeah. patient and that's why we all went into medicine right yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah that's great yeah. good for you so you. talk to us a little bit about you know about headache what do you wish your patients all knew you know what is your yeah. you know your biggest tips for us so I think you know the first biggest tip I think is as um, just like we talked about I think it is important to be get educated on your headaches um, there are migraines are very, very common. They're, you know, in about 20% of the population, they're much more common in women. So that is probably what the headaches are. But it is important to make sure that you, you know, there are other headache types. So in some of these, all of my, all of my emergency medicine patients think they have migraines because it's a really bad headache. Right. Right. So that's what they call it. And I'm like, did someone actually tell you there are migraines? Okay. Stop saying that word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times patients will diagnose themselves. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have the right diagnosis. So the first part I think is really, you know, finding help and not just suffering on your own and not because so many people just feel like, well, it's a headache. For a lot of people, their family members who don't get headaches really don't understand why, you know, you're just not getting Tylenol and moving on with your day. Um, so it can, that can be frustrating as well. So I think the first part is speaking with someone who knows headaches um, and making sure that you have the right diagnosis. Um, and then, you know, after that, since migraines are the most common, it's, um, you know, sleep and stress are the two biggest contributors. So if you, you know, are dealing with your headaches with just taking medications, drinking coffee, kind of, you know, putting a bandage on the issue, you know, in the moment, the more important thing is to try to work on all the underlying factors. And I think for, you know, 80, 90% of people sleep and stress. Um, yeah. And, you know, just to, those are the two biggest things to work on. Um, stress. Yeah, I mean that if you can if you can figure out a way that you can sleep seven to nine hours, you know, get your melatonin cycles yeah. appropriate. I mean, I'm a night doctor, so I'm like the worst person <laughs> to be talking about yeah. of being consistent. But um, and and getting good hydration and some mindfulness practices in. I mean, you're making big progress right there. Yeah. So for stress, um, you know, mindfulness. So when we are stressed out, whether it's the small little things that happen during the day or, you know, big mental, physical stressors, we're le releasing different hormones. And cortisol is one of those biggest hormones um, that is a stress hormone. And so actually mindfulness, yoga, you know, these actually have a physical change on our bodies. It actually decreases the levels of these stress hormones. So a lot yeah. of times if patients are a little bit hesitant and don't feel like they can get into it, you know, one way that I tell them that is in some of these studies, they're just as good as taking medication. I mean, actually doing these mindfulness practices. So there's a lot of evidence for it now. There's a lot of different apps that you can try. So one thing I would say is just don't give up on it because it's a way that actually is going to help you with your headaches, but it's going to help you overall with your health. Great, right. great. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I always say that uh, I always tell my wholest clients that, um, that, uh, you know, self care is not selfish, that it is an essential health tool. And it's for all the reasons that you just said. Absolutely. Yeah, because if you're feeling healthy and well, then, then you can really be present for everybody else around you. So yeah, taking care yeah. of yourself is, you know, the first most important thing. Yeah. And in terms of my weight wellness and fitness folks, absolutely. You know, the balance of that cortisol is, um, is, uh, is a hundred percent essential. So that's really great. Give us another tip. Um, so another tip I would say is, you know, if you are really stuck in, um, a cycle of chronic headaches, um, one of the things that you can do is keep a headache diary and a little bit of this might be a little bit time, um, extensive, but you know, overall it can really be helpful for you to figure out what are your, personal triggers, um, you know, writing things down, like what days did you get a headache? Was there something that you ate that was, you know, not in your usual uh, routine, like you went out that day or you went to a party and you had something different? Um, weather, relating to weather can be really helpful for a lot of people. Weather is a huge trigger. Um, you know, it's not something that we can necessarily control, but if you know that, you know, the rain is going to bring on a bad migraine and you have something planned for that day, then it's easier to kind of work with that. Um, yeah, absolutely. A headache diary can really, really be helpful. It's not something you have to do for a long time, but you know, for a month or two, um, you can really start to pick up some patterns, and that can be yeah. helpful. Yeah, that's. Um, I mean, I'm always amazed that more people don't do this for most of their health concerns, right? I mean, I'm like a little bit. I'm like, you know, I, I'm definitely an efficient person, so I am a list maker, right? Yeah. Um, but I remember even being really young and like I, I, I had headaches related to a back injury actually when I was like 17 or 18, okay. and so and I remember writing everything down. That I mean, I talked to my patients about this about stuff like like you know blood pressure or things like that when it comes to, you know, you know, weight and fitness, right? Obviously, you have to figure out how to track why you're making progress some days and why other days are harder. Right. And we do that with, you know, photo logs of food and, you know, fitness logs and things like that. So yeah. it's, it's really an essential tool to just learn how to plan and analyze yourself, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, so migraines and headaches are, you know, we're learning now that they're a genetic disease. So it is important to treat it like, you know, um, like any other chronic condition. You do want to give it time and, you know, give it the time um, to sort out, you know, what are the things that are making it worse? What are the things that are making yeah. it better? Um, because it is going to overall affect your health, like you said. Yeah. And the and what you're talking about, what we're, you know, in, in total science geek words, right? We're talking about epigenetics, right? right? right. It's like you're going to be prone to have something from your DNA, right. but what uncovers that? And that is your environmental factors, like your food and your exercise and, and all of that stuff, things you're exposed to, you know, the location you grew up. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you said it 100% right. Yeah. So yeah, migraine is a genetic disease, but it's actually one of those, you know, diseases where the environment plays such a huge role. So it's such a connection between your genetics and your environment. And there's a lot that you can do to help control the environment. But, you know, the important thing is to try to first figure out what are the things that are really affecting it for you. Yeah. So you said it exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Give us another tip. Um, so we talked about stress. We talked about keeping a headache diary. So, you know, a lot of patients ask me about food and I don't have a lot of good information about food, but what I can tell you is that, um, you know, um, there's a lot out there about things like gluten um, there's a lot about there about things like MSG, chocolate. Um, and what I would say to all those people who, you know, think that they might have one of these, um, maybe not necessarily allergies, but maybe um, an intolerance to these things and they cause headaches is, again, try to either keep a diary or if you are going to try to eliminate it from your diet, you want to give it enough time. So things like... And do just one at a time. Yeah. Right. right. So you know which one's doing what exactly. Um, so things like gluten, if you decide to eliminate it from your diet, it can actually, from the day that you stop, it can stay in your system for weeks up to a month. So, you know, you want to make sure that when you do eliminate something, you give it enough time to actually be out of your system. Um, gluten, is, it's hard to say. I have a lot of patients ask me about that, and there's not yeah. good evidence, but there are some people who have taken out of their diet and feel a lot better. So... I would say, you know, like you said, give each one um, enough time and do one at a time so that it's, you know, you know what is doing what. 
Um, I've also, and maybe you can also speak to this, I've also had a few patients tell me that the keto diet really helps. Um, so some people have started to try that, and that's something that I hope to actually look into more and kind of get more, see um, if there is some evidence out there. We do know that it helps with people who have um, seizures and epilepsy. So there has to be yeah. some type of... Well, that's where it came from, was exactly. thanks to the neurologist. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so there is definitely... I mean, we know for sure there's a brain and gut connection. Your um, gut has more nerves than your brain does. I mean, it's full of different nerves. So it definitely plays a role. What we eat definitely plays a role into our health. Um, and our stress and the horm again the hormones that we release so um, but I would say you know it can become um, sometimes an overwhelming task to try to eliminate yeah. foods especially if you are used to a certain diet or you know if you have your husband and your children that you're trying to cook for and then you you have a completely different diet so it can be a little bit of um, a complex task but if you do feel like you know um, you've tried a lot of other things and other triggers are not, you haven't been able to pick them up. Food might be, you know, something yeah. to look into. It is. It's always so tricky, right? Because it's sort of the same thing as like some medicines are going to work for someone and they're not going to work for someone else. Right. Like right. stress management is going to work for someone in a certain way or not. Like losing weight is going to be personalized depending on you, right? It's that epigenetics. It's what do you have underneath it? So um, I think that it's really important for people to think about food. I think most of your health is going to be better controlled in now and in the future if you are, you know, doing less processed food, more whole, you know, more whole food, yeah. mostly plant-based, but not necessarily all of it. And you just figure out that you don't need to be eating all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can do those things, you know, for the most part, you're going to make progress in whatever part, you know, that you're trying to make it in. Yeah. And I think for people who have chronic migraines, it can get very frustrating because you just want to do one thing, you know, you want to have that kind of solution. And unfortunately, yeah. there's not a match, you know, there's not a crystal ball. There's not one thing that's going to fix everything, but it is important, like you said, to, figure out for you, what are the big contributing factors? You know, is your sleep just not, is the huge thing? Um, is it the stress? Is it food? Or is it something else? I mean, hormones um, for women around the time of their period is also a very huge yeah. factor in migraines. So if there's things that, you know, you can work on in that, in terms of that, that can get a little bit complicated because we, there are uh, women who have migraines with aura. And that's a specific type of uh, migraine where before you actually get the headache component, you start to um, see lights for some people or they can have some tingling or numbness. Um, and that's a little bit controversial whether or not you can be on hormonal birth control. Um, so that's another reason to speak to your doctor. But hormones for women is another huge factor. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's really about taking the time to sit down with your doctor and sorting out, you know, what are the biggest factors and then, and slowly working on them. I think the yeah. thing to try to remember is that, you know, it's not something that you have to try to fix overnight. Um, you know, a lot of women have been dealing with chronic headaches for years and years. So it's going to take a little bit of time and it's, you know, uh, important to know that the, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is yeah. Be being, and being patient with yourself, I think is yeah. important in any kind of health and wellness thing, you know, things that um, come quickly, often go quickly, right? Yeah. So, um, so taking the time, you know, I often say this, but you know, I feel like health is kind of a static thing and wellness is the process of how you get to health. And often, I think that that, you know, that process needs to take time, right? I mean, it needs to be slowly so you can ingrain it in your life and everything else. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, tell us where we can find you and what services that you have. Sure. So I'm going to be practicing in Manhattan, New York. So I'll be in Chelsea, which is a small little, um, in Manhattan, you know, every three blocks we call it something different. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in Chelsea for those who know uh, New York City. Um, and if you want to find me otherwise, um, I'm at Huma Sheikh MD at Twitter. And I have um, the website here that hopefully we can link up through here. And yep. Um, and I'll start seeing patients hopefully in December. I'm all set to start next week. And um, my goal is going to be to provide, you know, a comprehensive approach to people that have chronic headaches. So it's, you know, you, um, a first-time consultation and then ongoing 
um, kind of guidance and support. I hope to, as um, things progress along, to develop um, a migraine education program for patients. So we do awesome. a lot of CME credits for doctors, but you know, I think it's important to engage the patients who actually are suffering from um, headaches. So that'll be hopefully something down the line um, you know, like a whole day program about just everything that we talked about. I think every subject yeah. that we hit on, you know, we could spend an hour or two hours, you know, going into all the details. Um, and then just, you know, um, I hopefully um, online support as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are new medications also coming out for migraine. So I don't want to, you know, um, kind of, you know, dismiss them. Say, yeah. say that those are not important. These medications that are coming out, they're the first time that we have medications made specifically for migraine, targeting a molecule that we think is important in the pathophysiology. So these are, they look very good in the studies. Um, there are a lot of people who are on them now and they're doing relatively well. So I want it to be an approach where, you know, it's the complementary, but it's also obviously, we're not dismissing the science behind it. Absolutely. That's great. And I had a patient ask me about the new migraine meds the other day. She yeah. came to the emergency department to get it. And I was like, I can't help you. <laughs> yeah. So, it's early, so yeah, there's a lot of people, yeah. you know, um, the companies are making it a little bit easier to get access to them as well. Um, so hopefully, yeah, they'll, they'll become much easier to get. Yeah. Right now we still have right. the prior off and all of that, you know, fun stuff, but hopefully as they become more wide used, It'll be easier. To yeah, process. yeah, that's great. So please put some links to the website and to your social media handles in the comments and any other resources that you think patients can get good, reliable information on the things that we talked about online. Yeah. Um, me, of course, I'm on holisthealth.com. Um, we have 12 week transformational uh, coaching programs, one of which has a killer Cyber Monday deal right now for 60% off through midnight. And so um, get in touch with us for that or go through the Holist um, webpage to find that um, or Facebook page. Uh, I'm at, at Holist Health on all of our social media handles. Um, and um, I am also a lifestyle medicine physician. And so I do um, consultations for patients in Idaho, Oregon, and California for comprehensive um, lifestyle planning. So um, that's what we do. And so it's lovely to talk to you. It's always so fun to talk to people that, you know, we've only communicated over social media and realize that we have so much in common. It really gives me a lot of hope every time I do these for our patients that they're going to be able to get the kind of care that they really need. Yeah. Um, and really um, hope, you know, also for us as medical uh, physicians and providers that we're going to be able to, you know, survive through this and create a comprehensive approach to care on our side. So thank you so much. And it was lovely to talk to you. You as well. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>